In this video I show you how to get the best arcane scaling increasing gem. Uh, this gem is called the Cursed Cold Abyssal Blood Gem and it can be found in Depth 5 FRC Chalice Dungeons and it's dropped by the Thumerian Elder Boss. This boss appears in all three different uh, Chalice Dungeons, so that's the Thumaru Ethel, the Lower Loran, the Gravestone. And you, so you can get it in the three different shapes. If you want the radial, you go to Thumaru Ithel. If you want the waning, you go to Lower Loran. If you want the triangle, you go to Is Gravestone. More often than not, the radial type is the preferred one because you can pick up two of those and then whatever elemental type that you want next, you pick up that in the triangle version of uh, the Is Gravestone. So I show you how to pick up uh, all three of the types. It depends on which one you want. But I show you how to get all three of them in this video. In this first dungeon here, this is the Depth 5 FRC Thumaru Ithil dungeon that you can create. Um, just to show you what kind of damage these weapons can do, the saw cleaver that my character is using here is a fire type, so at the beginning of the video, I kind of opened up the, win uh, the, I don't know what you, the menu, so you can see what gems I have on it. I, I got some pretty good gems on here. I believe I have two Cursed Cold Abyssals that increase uh, arcane scaling but also increase damage against beasts and kin so it does extra damage against those enemies and then the third gem I believe was a 27.2 fire gem which is what converts the weapon to fire damage so all the damage that this weapon is doing is fire and you can see that uh, for these bosses here I'm using uh, oil urns because that lowers the fire damage absorption of the enemy so I can do extra damage with my fire saw cleaver and I'm going for these charged R2 counter hits instead of doing the uh, visceral because the visceral damage isn't going to be that good with the pure arcane weapon. I don't mess with pure arcane belts too much. But then again, my character, I always run this max blood level character because I find it the most fun. I like being able to, you know, interchange between different weapons and stuff. But they are, they are pretty good, because most enemies in the game are weak to elemental damage. So having one of these weapons on an arcane build is obviously, you know, what you want. They'll do more damage than the physical type more often than not. However, the beast blood pellet that boosts damage only affects physical damage, and it doesn't affect elemental damage, so that's why I'm not using beast blood pellets in this video. Okay, so there's the Merciless Watchers. They usually drop the best gems, but more often than not, it's just tempering gem. But this time they dropped a dirty gem. So dirty gems, I know this is kind of off topic, but dirty gems increase rapid poison. It puts rapid poison on your weapon, which packs like bleed if you're from Dark Souls. So there's the gem there. You can see adds a rapid poison plus 21, which is really good. So if you want some good dirty gems, I think this dungeon's a very good one. This is a save edited dungeon, so you can get some pretty good secondary stats, which is uh, why I chose to run this dungeon particularly. Specifically, this uh, uh, Thumaru Elder Boss, that's at the end, that gives you the Cursed Cold Abyssal. Uh, not only does it give you that S scaling or A scaling, if it's pretty low arcane scaling on your weapon, but the secondary effect in this specific dungeon uh, adds plus 15 fire. So if you want a, uh, a weapon that does uh, as much fire damage as you can possibly you know, ask for, then you definitely want to pick up this specific gem if you're that particular about getting the most out of the weapon. And if you want the plus 15 bolt or plus 15 arcane, I think the dungeon is pretty much the same. I'll include the glyph in the description. so. All, any and all glyphs for these dungeons can be found in the, in the, in the description of the video, so make sure you check that out. This part, <laughs> this particular layer is kind of rough. You got these two labyrinth spirits running after you. They're super aggressive, and then these godforsaken spiders. I don't believe I, I, I think I make it through this room, but I went up ahead and I didn't, uh, I didn't quite make it. Took the time to heal here, I shouldn't have done that. It cost me my life. But I did get the door. So 
So this second boss is the Keeper of the Old Lords. Probably the boss I hate the most in the dungeons. And he's not particularly difficult. I mean, he is difficult at first, but you can just... If, if you get him in a loop, you can just catch him in an R1 spam and visceral, you know, just chain R1 spams with viscerals, and then he's cakewalk. But his move set to me is just so annoying. That and I play kind of sloppily. I'm not like Ray Dimitri where I can just one shot everything. There, I'm trying to put some oil on him so I can get some extra damage, but I don't know, man. I'm not sure what his fire damage absorption is, so maybe that wasn't the best weapon I could have picked, but, you know, it, it's a doing work. I can't complain about the damage. It is the Sock Weaver, after all. And if you're curious as to what runes I'm wearing, I'm wearing the uh, plus 10 and plus 15 health runes, and then the plus 5% Great Lake. So that, uh, what is that, all damage increased by plus 5%. So I got a lot of defense. And then coupled that with the max level character, it's, uh, uh, it's one-shot insurance is what I like to call it. So this third layer is really nice because the uh, lever is like right around the corner through a through a uh, through a door. You can you'll see it here in a minute. So skip the elevator, head off to the right. There'll be a whole hole in the ground, and then the lever should be in this room. But there's a lot of enemies in the room, so just bob and weave, get in there, pull the lever, run back out, you'll be fine. I believe there are four layers to this dungeon. I didn't do the fourth layer. I think it's the Bloodletting Beast, specifically the one that gives you the Tempering Gem. So if you're interested in picking up Tempering Abyssals, again, that, that I'm just doing this from memory. I'm not exactly sure if it's the Bloodletting Beast, but I think it is. And he drops the Tempering Abyssal, which is... You know, there's some debate about which one's better. Is, it, is the Tempering Abyssal, like, the perfect one? Is that better than the 27.2 that everyone goes for, or is it not as good? And the answer to that question is, is if you're at a more reasonable blood level, meaning like the meta or less, uh, then the Tempering Abyssal that has the plus 15 physical damage, I believe is better than the 27.2. But if you're well beyond the meta, then the 27.2 is 9 times out of 10. And I say 9 times out of 10, and that some uh, weapons that don't have super high base damage, so that's before scaling, uh, they actually benefit more from the Tempering Abyssal. So what I mean by that is if your weapon has base damage less than 170, I've noticed that the Tempering Abyssal gets you more damage. If it's above 170, then the 27.2 is better. Anyway, so this boss drops the Cold Abyssal. I don't think I got it there. I wasn't looking at the screen, but there's some cold abyssals that I have. So this one has, uh, actually I did get it. So this one you can see has add fire attack plus 15 as the secondary stat. Very good stat for those that uh, want a weapon that does pure fire damage and you want the radial shape. Next up we have the is gravestone run. So this one will get you the same gem but in the triangle shape. Same boss, same layer, third layer. I believe there's four layers here too if you're interested. But I only go to the fourth one. And in this video, you can see I'm using the Bolt variety. So I got some really freaking good gems on this uh, Bolt Saw Cleaver. That triangle was an out of shape I got from, I think, an Abhorrent Beast in Lower Loran, and it was out of shape. And it had some really good... It was, it was just a really good gem. I was really happy about that. Which is 
Which is kind of sad because I hardly ever use my elemental weapons. So just as a reminder, the best setup that you want for an arcane weapon, if you're running an arcane build and you want to convert your weapon to whichever elemental type you want, firebolt or arcane, the setup that you want is typically you want two cursed cold abyssals and then your elemental gem that you get from the watchers. So this specific boss here, the merciless watchers in the is gravestone gives you the triangle version of the weapon that you pretty much want, want to use and they come at 27.2%. These are the best ones. So most people, what they do is they offer two radials, the ones that I, the one I just got, and then they get one of the triangles from the watchers. But if you can get it uh, a waning type too. So you can, there's some variety with which weapon version that you want. The normal one, the uncanny one, or the lost one. It all depends on which gems you want to go and get. Okay, see there he dropped a fire gem. So I could use that on the uh, on weapon I convert to fire damage. I believe, I'm not certain on this, but I believe that at lower blood levels, by lower and meta or below, I think the fire abyssal, arcane abyssal, and bolt abyssal will outperform the Watcher's variety. And I believe you get the Fire Abyssal in a radial or waning shape from the Watchdog. The Watchdog always drops Fire Gems. And then the Bolt Abyssals come from the Abhorrent Beast and what's that one called? the Loran Dark Beast. Whereas the Arcane Abyssals come from Abritus and the Celestial Emissary. I'm not sure if there's a difference between those those two, you know what I mean? Like, you can get Bolt Abyssals from the Abhorrent Beast and the Loran Dark Beast, but I'm not sure if, like, if they if it's the exact same drop, just different boss, or there's actually a distinction between the two. If you know, comment below. I actually don't know. Anyway, so follow that. Void spiders. Cut down on backtracking as much as possible, so bring some uh, bold hunter marks with you. I forget, I think the next boss is Brain Sucker, which is, a, you know, typically an easy boss, but with a bolt saw cleaver, it's even easier. going for a backspin. Unsuccessful. Not that I really needed to do that, but I was feeling fancy. This bu this dungeon, by the way, I also believe is save edited. That's why I think uh, the brain sucker dropped a fire, the watcher dropped a fire as well. I think this one will give you the uh, plus 15 fire secondary effect, but there's also a plus 15 arcane and bolt effect as well. Again, I'll put those glyphs in the description, so I just picked this one to run, because let's be, let's be honest, this video is long enough. You don't need to see every single dungeon run.
And then you got those stupid dogs. I hate the dogs. If you think the keeper is bad, those dogs. <laughs> Imagine if. So you know how in like Dark Souls one, they had the capper demon, and then the two dogs in that tiny room. And that was just an awful boss. Imagine if like the keeper of the old lords had those two dogs with, with him in that room at the same time. <laughs> I think that that would have incited riots, or at least I would. So you can see there, uh, that bolt saw flavor does really good against uh, kin enemies like the brain sucker. Also, uh, four free pearl slugs, so you can pick those up if you want to make your own dungeon. But you can see how much damage that is doing here. So if you're running a pure arcane build, like 99 arcane, the right gems can give you some serious, serious damage. Freaking dog want to be dead, man. Alright, so the Marion Elder, same old, same old. Uh, just some if if you're not interested in using, you know, the elemental type uh, weapons against him, I recommend using the Legarius wheel. If you got the right gems on it, it's a very good weapon against it. anything that does arcane damage, because the uh, most enemies in the chalice dungeons are weak to arcane. So if you got uh, a weapon that does a lot of arcane damage or blunt damage, like the wheel, uh, it's a very good choice for running through these dungeons. But at the end of the day, it really is just practice. I'm not sure how many hours I have in the dungeons. It's probably in the hundreds. I know my, this character I'm using right now is uh, beyond a thousand hours, so I don't really know how many. How many hours those were dedicated to dungeons, but it's a lot because I farmed for all the good gems. Lost my sanity on the way, but it was worth it. You can't argue with the results. So what did I get here? I did not get the Abyssal, but he does drop the Abyssal, so I show you some here. I'm going to pull up the menu. Let's see, what did I get? Okay, so you can see the secondary stat, weapon durability, slow poison, those are worthless. Physical's okay. There's a good one, so you can use that one on an, on an arcane weapon. And then there's a plus 14 bolt, so you can use that on a bolt weapon. I think he dropped that one, in which case that's pretty good. And for this last dungeon, I believe, yes, the Lower Loran, I think I picked up the Arcane one here. So you can see my Arcane Saw Cleaver. What's funny about this weapon I have is that it simultaneously has a an HP depletion curse with a uh, attack up at full health. But I only get I only get that if I'm at full health. But an HP HP depletion is working against. Me. But my gun that I have uh, is counteracting the HP depletion. So you can see in the video that I'm constantly getting that extra damage boost, but it's constantly going away anyway. I just thought that was funny. So you can see how much damage the Arcane Saw Cleaver was doing against uh, that enemy. Most enemies in the Chalice Dungeons are weak to Arcane damage, so you can get some pretty good damage, like 900 per hit, provided you're running a relatively high Arcane build. And by relatively, I mean like above 50. So you can see I really went the wrong way. You shouldn't have gone this way. I really wanted to go up the ladder. I stepped in there, saw the madman, and said, nope, I'm out of here. Because even at blood level 544, he still one-shots you. Go up 
the ladder, go through the room, go down some stairs. I think there's a Lorian Dark, not Dark Beast, Silver Beast at the bottom. Pull the lever, homework on the back, rinse and repeat. I don't remember this first boss. I think it's the Keeper of the Old Lords. Uh, I think when I ran through this, I did this one last. And I entered the room, I was like, please don't be the Keeper. Open it up. It says Keeper at the bottom. Die inside. Just a little bit, though. You can see what I'm doing here. I've caught him in a parry loop. Go in, get some attacks, back off, parry him. And I'm not going for viscerals because I don't get good visceral damage. I'll get more from the counter damage that I get for uh, for these elemental weapons. That's because the visceral damage scales with your skill stat. And also what kind of physical damage your weapon does. So, again, since this character is max blood level, it has 99 skills, so relatively speaking, you can expect to get somewhere between 1,000 and 2,000 uh, visceral damage from, like, bosses and stuff. Maybe not from NPCs or other players. But uh, because this weapon doesn't do physical damage, you, uh, you don't get as much as you normally would. So unlike a, like a weapon that has pure physical damage, like a tempering setup for a salt cleaver. You could probably get somewhere with, you know, upwards of 3,000 damage or 99 skill. And then for weapons that are more skill oriented, like the rifle spear, uh, blade of mercy, stuff like that, uh, you can easily expect to get upwards of 4,000 damage with this sort of attack. I really should make like a video about, well, other people have made this video, so that's kind of the reason I'm not making it, but I was thinking about making a vis uh, video about explaining like how uh, gems work, how these chalice dungeons work, but you know, that's been done to death already. The only thing that I would have to contribute is to like maybe simplify it all, bare bones basics. <laughs> yeah. Again, I get pretty reckless when I go through here. Anyway, third layer, Gamarian Elder, Curse Cold Abyssal, Waning Shape, you know what's up. I believe there's a fourth layer, didn't go to the fourth layer, don't really need to. Oh, wait a minute, nope, I'm sorry, we're still in the second layer, I got lost track of time. But it's just a Lurian Silver Beast move. He'll be dead in two seconds. I mean, he's easy when you're using a meta level character. And I see that he dropped me a poor man gem. So poor man gems increase attack when your HP as well. It's like red tier stuff in Dark Souls. And I don't have too many uh, too many of those. You can see I got attack up near death 25.2. But I got the attack down curse. That sucks. So I got rid of the gem. Sad.
avoid giant fireball, go up the stairs. I think the lever is not too far away. Again, I don't really run this dungeon too much, so I don't know. But when you run enough of these dungeons, you start to notice patterns, so you can kind of expect like where the game wants you to go, because they're not as randomly generated as you might think. Certain layers definitely have, like, it's like, I've seen this before, so I kind of know where to go. There's a man man down there, didn't really want to deal with him. Bring a lot of pungent blood cocktails, they distract a lot of enemies. Through one there, an extra one there, just to be safe in case he was behind me. Okay, now we have the Thumerian Elder. I always thought it was weird they named the character that. Like, it makes sense that the Thumerian Elder is in the Thurmuru dungeon. So why don't they call this the Loran Elder? Or from the last dungeon, the Is Elder, whatever. I'm let the lore nerds figure that one out. And I believe that this boss fight did kill me. Okay. I got very sloppy there at the end. But such is life. seen a video where you can push him off that railing, but he's not really, he's cut, he's scripted so that he can't pull off the railing, but I have seen uh, people knock him out of bounds before, and have him, you know, die by gravity. Not really sure how to do it though. Again, there's those uh, runes doing work, saving my impatient butt. So there's actually something quite interesting about that attack he just did, where he summons the, uh, the spike out of the ground. If you're familiar with... I wanted to make a video of this. If you're familiar with the Nameless King from Dark Souls, he has this weapon art where he summons a thunderbolt from the sky, and if you're not looking at him, it misses you. The same thing happens with this guy. I'm going to make a video on that shortly. But anyway, you can see that he dropped the waning type of the gem. There's the cursed cold abyssals there. Uh, there's one plus 15 fire. So if you want a fire gem, waning shape, this one's pretty good. There it has add bolt, attack kin up, also very good.